Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. Right here, I have an email from one of you guys, and the email is just some general questions in regards to switching over to Linux. So instead of just replying to this directly, I thought it was a good opportunity to just go ahead and respond on video because some other people might have these same questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and read this email in its entirety and then kind of break it down and answer some of the questions within the email. So starting off, he says, hello, I want to switch from Windows to Linux, but I have some concerns. I've been using Windows 10 since 2017, removing all bloatware, telemetry, and stuff without installing any updates or having antivirus, which is what I like and I've never had any issues. Um, so far, so good. Granted, in Windows 10, some of the security updates are kind of important, but if you're not having issues, that's fine. My question is because I don't like updates, can I stop Linux updates and still be able to install software? So that's the first question, and it goes on saying, I will be using LibreOffice, Caden Live for editing. Nice. Uh, GDevelop for game development, and I will mainly be using it for programming, movies, and online activities. I have bad experiences with updates because when I was using Windows 7, back in 2011, it kept updating and my C drive was always filling up, yet I didn't install many things and then I stopped the updates and always had to free up space on my hard drive. Is it safe to disable updates on Linux and will I be able to install new game software later? I'm currently looking into X Ubuntu or Zubuntu, uh, KDE Neon, and I'm leaning more towards Manjaro. So overall, the main concern for this person regards updates, and they probably don't have a huge hard drive, so when it randomly fills up with crap, that's not a good thing. Uh, luckily, on any Linux distribution, I haven't had any uh, issues with updates taking up a whole lot of room on my system. It's usually small updates that are replacing code, so it's not adding a bunch of software or huge files when things go ahead and update. So in general, no matter what Linux distribution you actually run, this shouldn't really be a problem, but getting more into what you're actually looking for, a system that really doesn't update that much at all. Now in Linux, there are two, or in these um, GNU Linux desks or distributions, there are two main updating um, kind of philosophies. There's just the stable, non-rolling, and rolling release. At the end of this email, you said that you are leaning towards Manjaro. And for what you're specifically looking for, this might not be the best move because Manjaro is a Arch-based operating system. And because of that, it updates all the time. And because of how it works, you need to have your system updated whenever you install anything. Granted, like I said, I've never really had issues with it taking up a bunch of room, but if you're looking to not have to update every single time you do anything like that, uh, Manjaro or any other Arch distribution probably isn't going to be the move for you. Uh, you said you were looking into X Ubuntu and KDE Neon. Out of those two, I'd almost lead towards X Ubuntu. Now, those two are two different desktop environments, so between those two, I would go go off of what desktop environment you want to run off of. The X Ubuntu, I'm pretty sure, is XFCE, while KDE Neon is obviously KDE. And once you figure out if you want to go with a rolling release or non-rolling release, which most of the non-rolling release systems are a Debian-based system or Ubuntu-based, like these two that you have listed are, those systems generally do not need to update every single time you install anything. They do have security updates and things like that that you are going to want to go ahead and install. But there's even been problems lately with uh, people running really old versions of like Linux Mint, haven't updated in years, and they usually don't really have any issues other than obvious security concerns. Also, another thing in regards to all Linux distributions, they take up a lot less space than Microsoft Windows in general. So even if you do go with something like Manjaro, you're going to have more room on your hard drive than if you would have just installed Windows on it, generally speaking. So what I'm trying to say is your overall concern isn't really too much of a concern, but if you really don't want to hardly update your system, uh, just base vanilla Debian maybe with the non-free drivers so you don't run into any problems. That might be a good move. Or like I said, any other Debian or Ubuntu-based system is going to be completely fine. Uh, 
Overall, when you pick something like that, desktop environment is almost more important than the distribution. So you, you can install other desktop environments, but it's always easier just to pick a distribution that ships with the desktop environment that you want. Uh, what you have listed here, Manjaro, you could go a lot of different ways, but you have uh, XFCE, KDE. I like KDE a lot better. XFCE is just a little bit lighter, but depending on your specifications, you're not going to notice the differences in performance. So figuring out what you like as far as desktop environment goes is going to be really how you want to guide uh, what Linux distribution you ultimately switch to. And with all that said, there is a whole bunch of other reasons why you should and shouldn't switch to Linux. And I covered those in some separate videos that from here I would recommend you go to and watch. One of them is, I believe it's five reasons not to switch to Linux and to stay on Windows. And the other is the other way, five reasons why you should switch to Windows. Oh, not Windows, switch to Linux. And you said in this email that you already plan on using LibreOffice and Caden Live and you, you have your open source applications figured out. So it doesn't seem like you're gonna have really an issue with the Switch at all. Uh, if you play like online multiplayer games, you might run into some issues here and there. So I do recommend if you do play online games, make sure you go onto like the Proton website or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Lutris, go to the Lutris website and figure out if, make sure that you could play your games because that's one of the, it, it is the biggest reason why a lot of people end up back to Windows is because they can't play one of their online games. Now, if you're somebody who is currently on Windows and you're looking to make the switch, the best step that you could do is switch your current workflow to free and open source software and to play games that are compatible on Linux, which is most of them. A vast majority of games are playable on Linux. It's just games that have like anti-cheat enabled. Those won't work. So I've referenced three videos, the five reasons why you shouldn't and should switch to Linux. And uh, the video that I'm talking about now is the, uh, I think it's 25 different free and open source applications for Windows that you could go ahead and check out. So I'd recommend you all take a look at that video as well. I hope this kind of answered your questions. If it didn't, you could leave them down in the comments below and me or somebody else will try to answer it to the best of our ability. With all that said, I do hope you all have a beautiful day. Make sure you hit the eye over there or over there to check out the videos I was talking about. Uh, like this video if you did, subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Again, have a beautiful day and goodbye.